This is Justin Fisher, and he even brought a friend of his, Chris, from Mississippi. And he's going to talk to you a little bit about what he does. And then we have a young lady, Sheila Woodson, and she also works with Chevron as well. And so there are a lot of opportunities at Chevron, even Chevron Phillips. And, and so I didn't know there was two different Chevrons, but I, you know, I'm learning too. So without any further ado, I want to introduce to you Justin Fisher from Chevron. Thank you. First off, I want to just do the next effort to do the biggest job introducing me. Like I said, my name is Justin Fisher. I've been down here in Houston for about three years now. All three years I've been working for Chevron. Uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with downtown. I'm even familiar with downtown here. Yeah, we're so uh, I never, I never got downtown. Downtown Houston? Yeah. I didn't live in downtown. I know those big shiny buildings uh, downtown. Uh, I didn't live in downtown. Yeah, I didn't live in downtown. Oops. What's up? Those are the buildings that I work in. Those are the Chevron Towers that are downtown. Uh, I work there on the 31st floor. Been there ever since uh, 2012. Probably be there for another year before I toss uh, around to different positions. I'm going to call position engineer. So I work with a lot of uh, refineries. Basically, uh, we have some facilities that process gas and oil. Then you go to the pump, say it's pump out in Chevron across the street here. We get their product from the ground. It's a natural resource. We extract it from the ground, bring it up, put it inside our facilities, uh, process it, basically clean it up, and make it usable for your mom's and dad's cars. So that's a part of that refining process that I told you about. When we extract these natural resources from the ground, they have all types of wood, snow, dirt, rock, fossils, everything, I mean, some of everything comes in. They're dinky, it's decaying, like you said, and they're thousands of feet below the ground level. Oh. So when you pull this stuff up, you don't know what's coming up with it. You have to clean it up. And when your dad does with these incinerators, we, so we can you know, send all these byproducts, all this, this waste, basically these incinerators, and just, you know, the high temperature and the high pressures, it gets rid of it all. So we don't have to deal with the environmental waste. Uh, so about 65% of our employees are international. So with that being said, it's a lot of opportunities to not only travel to different countries, but also live in different countries. For me, you know, being a young male African American, I didn't have the chance to uh, experience the world growing up. I was, I was uh, I guess, uh, held in Mississippi for the majority of my life. I was living there for 22 years without even leaving the country. And we lost our Mississippi. Oh. So the opportunity to travel abroad, to study abroad, and all that with Chevron is limitless. I want you to realize that when you think of Chevron or any of these oil and these companies and owns the oil and gas company, we do more than just oil and gas. Right? Yes. I, for example, have been over to Angola, Africa, several times to our offshore platform. And our offshore platforms are totally powered by solar panels. Our top deck of the platform is completely powered by solar panels. We have solar panels in our Besides this tape, we have maybe 40 or 50 of them. They sit on the top of the deck in the middle of the, the uh, Atlantic Ocean, and that's what's powering our platform. So it's, you know, we're not burning fuel that we're doing, but all we're doing is transporting gas through a pipeline. But all the equipment and all the machinery that's on that platform is powered you know, from the sun. And then, which is good. Yeah, which is, which is very you know, environmental friendly. Our country alone about accounts about 35%. Industry on a daily basis. So you guys try to figure out how to keep up, how can we compete, you know, and how can we sustain our standard of living here in the United States, you know, with the resources. So we need the engineers, yes. we need the veterinarians, we need, you know, we need all the STEM disciplines to to you know to solve these type of problems. And not only do we need that, but we need uh, I show up to work, you know, every day, and I wanted to meet guys that look like me in the office. Uh, I got a project team of about 70 individuals, and it's probably four African Americans. When they go, when they go out to these these 
HBCUs and they're looking for engineers, they might have, you know, I say 100 people show up to that booth. Here in Chevron, we're looking for a certain type of individuals. We want to see work experience, we want to see co op and internship experience, we want to see the high GPA, what kind of activities you were involved in in college. And if you don't have all three of those, it's already going to take one issue. And what they're seeing is they're getting us, but they're getting us that are unqualified. So that's when they're having trouble. This is the level that starts right here. It yes. starts at this foundation of getting involved with these, these STEM projects, having to do rockets, you know, having to just, you know, getting them exposed to this stuff at an early age. Go ahead and instill them so it won't feel like it's just busy work, yeah. you know, when it actually means something. It won't feel like, oh, I'm just going here to take a test. When it's recess, you know, when I can when I can go play basketball, just like that. Go ahead and get in them early, you know. That way they'll know when they apply to college what they need to do. What they need to do is doing in high school to get to the university. What they need to do the university to get to the career. It's Chris Lacey. Well, I'm just going to keep you short and simple. Um, I basically was just like y'all one day sitting in the chair listening to somebody like Justin talk to me. And when he asked y'all that question about what y'all want to be when you grow up, I stopped and I didn't know. But that's something you probably don't really have to worry about right now. You still like elementary school, you know, so just have fun, learn, 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 learn. But as you get older, you got to figure that out. And once you figure that out, you got to go somewhere and learn how to do it. And when you get ready to go learn somewhere how to do it, you got to choose. Well, me, I coach college football. And I deal with a lot of guys who are 16, 17, 18 year old. When I go out and recruit them, they still don't know. So that makes my job kind of harder because if I don't have a major that you want or whatever, it's hard to get to the school. And some of them, they think in their mind, they don't even think about it because all they want to do is play football or something like that. So um, just to be honest with you, I, I, do, I work with a lot of coaches who just want to bring the kids in to coach football, I mean to play football. Not really worried about the education a lot. That's kind of how college football is. Well, the reason I want to become a coach is because guys like yourself, we need our education, especially being African American children. You know? And um, it's a, it's a, it's not a lot of us in college now. Yeah. So we gotta start pumping out more kids, getting colleges, so you can get accepted into places like Chevron. See what I'm saying? So what, what I say to the kids sometimes when I give them. I tell them, like, okay, you come here and play football or whatever, but use this football as a tool to get your education, right. not the other way. Yeah. So just start thinking about college and things like that. Like he said, I own something called New Bay University. I'm, um, I'm, st well, I'm still in school getting my master's right now, but I'm trying to get that going. And it's kind of like this right here, where you might get a building. Um, do a couple football fields and a couple classrooms. And kids, like I said, when you're young age, you come in. I use what you like to do, like football and basketball and stuff like that, to kind of wean you in the door or whatever, get you in the door. Then you get in the door, start throwing stuff at you, like what is the ACT, what is the SAT, help you get to the right after school, um, vice versa. Because a big problem with us, coming out of high school, elementary school, we can't even qualify to be in the car. So, can't have one without the other. So, Sheila, who is all yours? Thank you. I'm Sheila Woodard. I work for Chevron Phillips, the Swinney Complex, which is like an hour from here. I've been with them for 23 years. Yes. I'm a black female, as you see. And how many females do you think they've hired? Black females since I hired in 23 years ago. Zero. Zero. It's like they're not out there. So how many of you have sisters? Cousins, females, cousins. So. We need to be encouraging our sisters, our black females, to do the same thing. Get educated, get the good jobs because they're out there. They're begging for female operators, engineers, 
in my company, they go out and recruit at the black colleges. Some of them are not interested. So the thing is, life is all about choices. The choices you make today are what we make them tomorrow. So stay encouraged, get educated, and be prepared.